Hi everybody, my name is Connor McDonald. This is how you get in touch with me via Twitter, and this is my blog. I'm one of the developer advocates inside Oracle, trying to make your life more productive and successful as a developer. This is the next of the KISS series of videos, keeping it simple with SQL, focusing on partitioning. These are short two minute sessions with a strong developer focus because partitioning is often seen as the realm of the DBAs. In this session, we're going to talk about hash partitioning. Now the reality is big stuff is a pain in the database world, just like in reality. Let's face it, when the telephone book got too large, what did they do with it? They split it into more than one book. Hash partitioning uses the same principle, make big stuff into lots of smaller pieces of stuff. Now the main benefits of hash partitioning really belong in the realm of the DBA, but hash partitions are still important for developers when it comes to indexes. So we're going to talk about hash partition tables just briefly in this video so you're across the DDL and the basic concepts. Let's look at the DDL. It's very simple. Here's my table called T. If I'm going to hash partition it, I simply do partition by hash, choose a column or columns, and then nominate the number of hash partitions. I can explicitly list the partitions if I want to, but this is a much easier way. Just give me eight partitions. If I then do select partition name from user tab partitions, you can see that the database created eight partitions and gave them system generated names. The partition name is not so important when it comes to hash partitions because the database controls where the data goes into which partition, not us. It does so by applying a hash function. Let's have a look at how the database does that. It does an even spread of values. Here's my table called T as we just created, and I'm going to insert 100,000 rows. That syntax there will insert the values 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 100,000 into my table called T, and those values will be hashed across the eight partitions. So how do we see what partition each row has gone into? Well, on each row is the row ID, that unique identifier that associates a row's physical place in the database. Embedded in that row ID is also the object number. Now each partition, being a separate segment, has its own object number. If we know the object number, we know the partition in which that row went into. So using the DBMS row ID package, I can see that looking at each row ID object for the row ID, I get effectively the partition mapping. I don't need to know what actual partition it was, I just know it was one of the eight. And you can see the count of rows across each partition is very nicely spread. 100,000 rows and approximately 12,500 rows per partition. Can we predict which particular partition a row will go into? Well, it would appear that the ORA hash function uses the same internal function as the partitioning hash function. If you look at those values there and try to keep a note of them, maybe just the first two, 342 and 381 as the suffixes, if we run the ORA hash function on that same column, passing in the parameter of seven. Now what does seven mean? It means we have a hash range of zero to seven, or in other words, eight possible hashes, just like the number of hash partitions we have in our table. And we can see that the same number of values pop out, 12,342 on one of the partitions, 12,381 on one of the partitions, and so forth. So there's a very good chance the ORA hash function uses the same hashing function as done for partitioning. One thing that's critical when it comes to hash partitions, if you're creating them as a developer, is the power of two rule. The number of partitions should be a power of two. Now, why is that the case? It's actually done deliberately. Let's look at a table which breaks that rule. It doesn't stop you from doing this. We're gonna have five partitions in our table called T. We're gonna insert the same 100,000 values again. So we should expect 20,000 rows per partition. Now we run our row ID query Notice that we don't get that. We get a bias. Three of the petitions seem to have double the amount of rows as one of the other petitions. That is actually done deliberately. It's not a classical spread of values with a hash partition. Let's try, look at what happens now. If we wanted to move that table from five to eight partitions. If this was a classical redistribution, all the hash values were evenly spread over five partitions, and then they were gonna become evenly spread over eight partitions, Every row, or almost every row, would probably have to move. There's a very good chance that each row would need to move to a new partition. In fact, we can actually get an idea of what that would be by looking at ORA hash 4, which is 0 to 4, partitions 5, to ORA hash x of 7, 0 to 7, partitions 8. 
approximately 87,000 of our 100,000 rows would probably have to be relocated. That's not very efficient. Using the power of two rule, partition maintenance becomes a smart redistribution. So if I'm going to go from five to say six partitions, I would pick one of those high value partitions with 25,000 rows in it, and I would split just that. So by doing add partition, I go from five to six partitions. Notice one of the high count partitions with 25,000 rows has been split. So we have an extra two partitions now, each with 12,500 rows. If I add another partition, it goes to this, and one more partition, and you can see because we're now at a power of two, in this case eight, we have that even spread. So it was done deliberately such that if you stay with powers of two, you get an even spread. If you don't have powers of two, it's not an expensive exercise to move to that model. There's only one partition worth of effort for the DBA when he has to move data. You can run these scripts yourself by clicking on the live SQL link in the YouTube description. In the next session, we're gonna look at what to do when range partitioning doesn't do and hashes doesn't do. What do we do when we handle other types of partitioning. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you all again soon on the KISS principle. Keeping it simple with SQL.